Hello, before this video, you should, have already, you should already understand the words and concepts found in financial statements. When I say financial statements, I mean the balance sheet and the income statement. Alright, so welcome back again to MBABullshit.com. The topic for this video is return on assets, or ROA, which is one of the profitability ratios of financial ratio analysis. Remember, you can always go back to mbabullshit.com. So this video discusses and analyzes the return assets, or ROA, which is one of my free videos on liquidity and profitability. And also, yeah, which include these ratios over here. Okay, so these ratios are pertain to liquidity, profitability, or market value. So after these, you can check out my next videos on mbabullshit.com on financial leverage ratios, and that, that video includes all these ratios over here, and my other video on turnover ratios, which includes these ratios over here at the bottom. Okay, so let's get down to it. Let's start with a story. Let's say that ABC Company has $1,000 in net income per year and $4,000 in assets. What is the return on assets? Well, very simple. The ROA, or return on assets, equals $1,000, which is the net income, okay, $1,000, divided by $4,000, which is the total assets of the company. And if we divide these two numbers, we get a figure of 0 0.25 or 25%. So now we can say that this company's ROA, or return on assets, is 25%. What does this mean? Okay. Well, this means that for every $100 the company has in assets, it makes $25 in profit per year okay per year therefore a higher ROA is considered as better the higher ROA indicates that the company is more efficient in using assets to generate profit a lower ROA indicates that the company is less efficient in using assets to generate profit now there are still now this ratio isn't perfect okay there are still some important flaws or wrong things about or should I say um, there are a lot of things which this ratio does not completely tell us or some things which are wrong or not completely good about this ratio first of all a high ROA does not necessarily mean high cash flow remember financial managers prefer cash flow instead of profit profit is more of a concept which is used by accountants um, nowadays financial managers prefer to use cash flow the ROA does not take into consideration the actual cash flow of the company it only takes into consideration profit so if, for example your company might have a, a high ROA because of high accrued sales and not cash sales and or it mean it may be pay the cash too far into the future so maybe remember the meaning of accrued sales meaning you you make a sale and you supposedly earn from that sale but you might not necessarily get the cash from the, that sale until much later in the future secondly a low ROA may just be the result of previous years intense profitability and you're just taking a breather for this year so just because you have a low ROA does not mean that things are bad maybe you grew so quickly in the past three years and your company is just um, should I say taking a breather for this year and then next year the growth in sales or the growth in profit might continue quickly again okay or yeah so although or, or 
let me rephrase that. That might be a result of two years ago being uh, very... It might be the result of growing quickly in the previous years. And then maybe your ROA is low this year just because your most recent year's earnings are quite low. Okay, because you're taking a breather. Because remember, ROA, okay, when you compute ROA here, okay, this is this this one thousand here is actually the net income of the most preview most recent year, not this year. Because this year is not yet finished. So you still do not have the figure for uh, for profit for this year because this year has not ended yet okay all right three asset value is based on book value not real market value remember in this ratio over here this figure down here is supposed to be the value of the company's assets okay but where do we get this four thousand dollars it is based on book value okay meaning it's it's not really based let's say one of your ass let's say your company has assets in the form of a building for example or a car okay the value of this building if you sell it might be one million dollars but your accountant using the rules of the generally accepted accounting principles and the rules of depreciation they might value the building wrongly at a price of two million dollars even though you can sell it in the market for only one million dollars why are they selling it why, why did they value it at two million dollars well maybe they bought you bought the building for two million dollars and minus depreciation uh, you maybe you bought the building for three million dollars and minus depreciation it is now valued in the book but not in the real world it is now valued in the book for only two for for two million dollars but the real value if you were to sell it might actually only be one million dollars so the asset value in computing ROA is based on the book value and not the real market value of your assets. Okay, now let's analyze. How would we analyze the company traditionally using ROA? First is to compare to the historical ROA of the company. Okay. Your company, or might not necessarily be your company, might be your client's company or a company that you're thinking of investing in. Okay, so compare to the, to the historical ROA of the company. If the ROA is higher now than last year's, then this indicates better efficiency than before in using assets to generate profit. If the ROA is lower now than last year's, then this indicates less efficiency than before in using assets to generate profit. Another thing we can do is compare ROA to other similar companies. If this company's ROA is higher than the ROA of other similar companies in similar industries, then it indicates better efficiency than them in using assets to generate profits. Conversely, if the ROA is lower than theirs, then this indicates less efficiency than them in using assets, assets to generate profit. Okay? So there you have it. That was the traditional. So the earlier part of the video had my own analysis, and the later part of the video had this traditional analysis. So I, ho I hope you learned something. Remember to share it if you like it. Follow me on Twitter at MBA Bullshit, or follow me on Facebook. Please like my fan page. Just go to facebook.com slash MBA Bullshit or simply forward my YouTube links on your email or other social media. So have a great day and goodbye.